Welcome back to Network Africa. Sudan says it has severed diplomatic relations with North Korea in order to satisfy the United States conditions for lifting its economic sanctions against them. A senior Sudanese official told journalists that they had met all the required conditions and are expecting the sanctions to be lifted. In July, U.S. President Donald Trump delayed his decision to permanently lift the economic embargo on Sudan by three months. The UK-based Financial Times reports that Washington is expected to announce its decision on whether to fully lift the sanctions on October the 12th. Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir was believed to have once given refuge to killed al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. Economic sanctions were imposed against Sudan after the state was labelled a sponsor of terrorism. And three Chinese nationals and 22 other suspected illegal money changers have been arrested in Zimbabwe's capital, Harare, in a tough new crackdown on illegal currency deals. Local media reports that the group has been charged with contravening the Exchange Controls Act after they were caught red-handed illegally trading money. The state's prosecutor, Francesca Mokumberi, says more than $55,000 was seized from them and that their activities had a negative impact on the economy and if convicted, they would face a lengthy prison sentence. Zimbabwe is in a deep economic crisis, forcing it to abandon its currency in favor of foreign currencies. It has run out of U.S. dollars, introducing bond notes as a substitute. Now, back here in Nigeria, health authorities in Bayelsa State, Nigeria South, have confirmed an outbreak of monkeypox disease in the Fagwe area of Yanogwa, the state capital. So far, 13 persons are reported to have been infected while 49 others who had had contact with them are still being observed. The Bielsa State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Ibitimitula Tebu, who confirmed the disease outbreak to Channel's television, also advises residents not to panic. He offers an assurance that the monkeypox epidemic is being properly controlled and the infected persons have been quarantined. According to Mr. Itebu, the Health Ministry the state and the state government would shoulder the financial responsibility of the patient's treatment and other needs. The infected persons are presently quarantined in an isolation center at the Niger Delta University Teaching Hospital, Kolobiri, in Yanogwa, local government area. And elsewhere, five Nigerian soldiers and three U.S. Special Army servicemen have been killed in an ambush in Niger near the border with Mali. The U.S. Army has been providing training to Niger's army to help combat Islamic militants in the region. The soldiers were attacked while on a routine patrol in an area known to have insurgents present. Officials are currently unable to confirm who orchestrated the attack. Two wounded U.S. soldiers are set to be in stable condition and will be flown to Germany to receive treatment. A lecturer from the University of Lagos, Dr. Okwe Okwala, is here with us to talk more about this situation. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Now, so yes. The deadly attack on the joint U.S.-Niger patrol is very worrisome. Who do you think is responsible? Well, I think it's really very worrisome because um, the U.S. presence in the Sahel and indeed the rest of Africa where the activities of the Islamists are very pronounced, is to stem the, term, to the, the, the trend, to make sure that um, these Islamists, they don't wreak havoc in these um, fragile African states. But you see, um, it, seemed not to, it seemed not to be succeeding so much. And uh, from what we can see, uh, the Islamists have been very active in Mali. And the terrorists have been targeting particularly the, the U.S. Nigerian soldiers We are patrolling to contain the activities of these Malian terrorists from getting into Niger and also, I mean, to curtail the operations around that area. So I, I imagine that it was um, those uh, terrorists from Mali that they have wreaked this havoc. No. Although there are also sales of um, Ikeda, there are sales of Boko Haram even in, in Niger, but if, in a particular area where this happened, I think they probably from, from, from Mali. Now, this incident has drawn world attention to the presence of U.S. troops, not just in Niger, but in other African countries. Do you think that they are doing enough to stem the activities of these insurgents? Um, initially, U.S. was not meant to engage 
in operational, they were supposed to advise, supposed to provide um, technical advice, provide uh, training, provide. But I think in some of these countries, like Niger, like Mali, they are beginning to get involved in the combat itself. And um, there are also some of natural, natural feelings that are being hurt. There are people who are not necessarily, uh, who may not necessarily be supportive of the activities of the terrorists, but their national pride is being hurt by the presence of American soldiers on their soil. And these are things that, you know, the American government and American, uh, the Pentagon should also understand the psychology of the people. The fact that we need help does not mean that we, we also, I mean, that you come, you know, some of these things are easily misunderstood. And uh, these are Islamic countries. I mean, are, these are countries that most popular, most of their citizens are, are Muslims. And the way Americans perceive life is not exactly the way some of the Muslims, and then some of these things will hurt their sensibility and it may, it may end up having the opposite effect. May, so that you see that the, the, the terrorists may actually be using, oh, this is, how they, this is how they conduct their life. They have come to, and they will use it to even a tool for recruitment. So I, it's something that they should do, but they should be very careful. It's always better, it would be better if they provide all kinds of support without engaging in combat itself. But do you see these threats abating anytime soon? Um, it, it, I, I, it may not be so soon. But you see, there are, it's not just a security issue. It's also an economic issue. When people are hungry, they, they, I mean, they, 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 they value their life far less than when people are full and they are contented with the way they are seeing life. So uh, besides, besides, I mean, giving arms, taking security measures, that there should be, uh, the U.S. and the Western world should do more to improve the lives of Africans, the life of, and even uh, starting from being strict with their governments. Because sometimes it's not that go Africans cannot help themselves, it's just that we have, uh, we have very predatory governments who don't mean well for the people. And when you, the people are impoverished, then they can fall for anything. You can mobilize them through religion, you can mobilize them through anything. So it's, uh, for a long-term solution, let us not look just on the on economy. Let us also look, sorry, let us not just look on security, arms, uh, whatever. Let's look on economy. Let us look on uh, human capital development so that those people can also, enlightenment. So I, I think that that's, that's the way for a, a more permanent solution. Now, we, this latest attack, you know, uh, took its toll on the lives of five Nigerian soldiers and some U.S. soldiers as well. But do you see this bringing down the morale of the troops? Um, well, I think, I imagine that those troops are, are well trained. I imagine that we expect certain sort of things to happen from time to time. Uh, they are not, we may be, we civilians may be more demoralized than they, they will be because they know in any engagement, any combat like that, uh, there may be casualties. You know, before I have once had a friend who is um, who was going to we when we were in university he was um, a, a very good friend of mine. He was posted to to uh, well, this time they have a comog to in Liberia. I mean, before he left, we discussed, we hugged, and he told me, "Well, if you see me again, if you don't see me again, this is what you tell my, my uh, this is what you do to uh, tell my friends." That time they were about to get married before he moved. So, I mean, they are trained to to expect that if, you re, if, if there are real soldiers, and I believe that U.S. and uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are trained well to know that when you engage in combat, you take any outcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Okwi Okwala, lecturer uh, at the University of Lagos. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The United Nations Security Council is to discuss the crisis in Mali after an investigation found that the country's security situation has significantly worsened while expressing his disappointment in the resumption of fighting between local armed groups despite a prior peace agreement between them, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres uh, calls for funding and logistical support for the new regional force that is being set up to fight jihadists in the new Sahel. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.